Fucking dude, what the fuck? You're very handsome. <laughs> That's it. I'm calling the conductor. Suck a bag of dicks, lady. Fuck you sideways, oh, sir. <laughs> We have talked previously about this film regarding the behind the scenes takes. Today we wanted to focus on the gag reel when it comes to the film Bullet Train. And honestly, it looks like this film took a lot of people by surprise, considering how well it performed in terms of box offices and the overall outcome of the story and actors coming together. Oh, I got wasabi in the eye. Now let's do this. Hurry. Okay. <laughs> And before we get into more of these moments, some trivia for you. For which film did Brad Pitt portray the title role of a childish pompadour wearing Ricky Nelson worshipping musician? Leave your answer in the comments down below and stick around to the end of the video to find out if your answer was correct. You know, I took a good hard look at myself in that mirror. I didn't like what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> With a budget of only 90 million to a current box office holding of 283 million, it's no wonder that this film stood out. <laughs> the setting itself was so simple with the entirety playing out on the set of a fake train. The story takes place on a bullet train careening across Japan. What would Thomas the Tank Engine say? He'd say, take responsibility, Lemon. That's more of a Ringo. He sounds more like John. He's more yeah. like here. That's, a, that's his voice. It's, it's a Ringo star, isn't it? But most of the movie was shot on green screen sets, and the cityscapes and countryside that the train rides through are mainly miniatures and CGI. It could be Ebola. Don't it bleed from their eyes? Ebola? I smell. Don't smell it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> What are you smelling? I just want to see if it. But real quick, make sure you guys check out our Instagram page linked down in the description. There's a ton of interview moments and memes, so make sure you check it out and give us a follow. You took my snake! Wait, we gotta point this. Uh, this way, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and aside from the characters messing up lines or forgetting them altogether, there have also been some goofs when it comes to continuity or factuality. For example, the train begins its journey from Tokyo at night and arrives in Kyoto in the morning. In reality, all bullet trains on the Tokado line start running at 6am and stop running by midnight. One stop. Then you get off my motherfucking train. Then you get off my train, you dipshit. You buy yourself a new ticket, then this time you hold onto it like a good little boy and learn to speak fucking Japanese. <laughs> there are no overnight trips, but the film doesn't have to be perfect, just believable. And at the end of the movie, after the crash, sirens can be heard for a few minutes. The tone and pitch of the sirens never changed, as it should have as the emergency vehicles approached. Again, not that big of a deal. <laughs> I'm dead. Do a lot of people. Twice. I should have done a third. <laughs> <laughs> There's a gag involving a Japanese toilet, and there's an entire train car dedicated to a fictional anime character, but overall, the bullet train is a cartoonish and heightened amalgamation of different design influences with distinct cars helping the viewer to keep track of characters as they move about. You're bleeding, mate. Mm, not my mate, I don't bleed. You don't bleed? No, never. When have you seen me bleed? Game once. What are you, a fucking mutant? You shot me. I shoot a lot of people. twice. I should have done a third. <laughs> I'm so sorry. On a Los Angeles soundstage, the team built one economy car and one first class car, plus a couple of extra bits and pieces like the lounge car and the, all the bathroom connectors, entrances, and exits. Shuneman explains. To help the actors feel like they were really aboard a high-speed locomotive, LED screens with video footage of the Japanese countryside were hung outside the windows of the train set, as opposed to being added during post-production. <laughs> Where am I? Yeah, we're on the Highland Express, mate. Yeah. On our way to fucking Hogwarts. 
We could shoot the train journey in camera while we were on the train. It's called virtual production. And I think it was a huge benefit to the actors and their performances, Leach said. The way I approach filmmaking is a huge collaborative process. I think during physical production, there were so many fun things that happened that we just embraced the whole process. <laughs> the actors themselves spoke about what went into making this film. We start to want to tell the whole story. Three, two, one, go. With all the action that went into this film, there was no training per se, but there was choreography in terms of the characters and how they react to each other as there are a lot of fights going on. Leach popularized Gung Fu in Hollywood with John Wick. Ever since the 2014 film, every action movie has tried to mimic its fighting style, even Leach's own movies like Atomic Blonde. However, the filmmaker took a different approach to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat this time around. David Leach has stunt doubled for the big boy, Brad Pitt. Yeah, so I took this little movie called Fight Club <laughs> and uh, had to go through a little bit of fight training where I met Mr. David Leach. It's really sweet. The filmmaker explained that he was influenced by Jackie Chan in the way that fight sequences blend in combat and comedy. Leach explained, there's a little bit of physical comedy. The fights are designed to enhance the characters. We're here to have fun in this super contained space. Sometimes the action is just for action's sake and we certainly didn't do any of that on bullet train. I think it's boldly original and wildly creative, and there is a shock and a surprise and a twist around every corner. According to the Bullet Train's second unit director, Greg Rementer, Pitt wasn't one to shy away from throwing down. Brad did 95% of his physical stunts, the fighting, Rementer told Vulture. He's like a natural born athlete. He really got in there. We can't be sure the 5% of Ladybug stunts Pitt didn't partake in. For Aaron and I, like, we're morons like we're just like we just wanted to laugh like we just wanted to play and laugh after a few hours you kind of like lose your mind so you're just like <laughs> you're just trying but we can assume he did a lot of the hand-to-hand -hand fighting with characters like tangerine played by aaron tyler johnson lemon played by brian tyree henry and wolf played by bad bunny when chatting with hollywood reporter Pitt noted that this long relationship with Leach, who was a stunt double on Mr. and Mrs. Smith, The Fight Club, and Troy, prepared him to play Ladybug in Bullet Train. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! Woo, David Leach! <laughs> That's about to be sick, man. Yeah, that's okay. Ooh! He trained me for those fights, and in a way, he was helping me develop the character. Now he's a director with his own voice and own vernacular, and I'm serving him. He's the boss. So there was a beautiful symmetry to two old friends, Pitt said. And being such a well-known actor as he is, it's no surprise how he was so involved. Like a stone cold evil bee. TCH. <laughs> it was so cool to go back and forth in the role between being like, oh, I'm just like a, oh God, I'm so helpless. Please help me. And then next flipping to just like a really, really horrible human being. <laughs> Confidence and dedication were prevalent on the bullet train set, as Greg Rementer revealed it wasn't just Brad Pitt going all in on his stunts. Never have I ever done so many huge actors in one feature where all of them excelled at the physical movement of our training, Rementer said. It's totally great. We just got, too, we just got too far ahead of you. He's always striving to get different variation and right there with you rewriting or improvising with you. Or how about if we say this? Oh, I really love that. Can we go back to that version? Henry told The Hollywood Reporter that he loved getting to do his own stunts. When you get an opportunity to do a David Litch movie with David Leach choreography and David Leach stunts, you want to do it. I did and I had to sit down too. I do it again. I really would, he noted. And as far as the answer to our trivia question, it was actually John Swade. This 1991 
Pitt vehicle, which also featured an appearance by Samuel Jackson, was not Brad Pitt's best work, but fortunately for Pitt, it was released in the same years as Thelma and Louise, and hence largely forgotten. I love the beginning where you're stealing yourself to answer the call. The way I approach filmmaking is a huge collaborative process. I think during physical production, there were so many fun things that happened that we just embraced the whole process. So what do you guys think about all this? Did you enjoy watching this film or have you not already seen it? And what do you think about the story overall? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on for more videos just like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. That's it. I am calling the conductor. Who hurt you? You shot me. I shoot a lot you shot of people. Me twice. Well, you also have a shootable face. Ha, 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 ha.